All right. Hi, everyone, and welcome to our session today. I'm going to give it about a minute for our, our attendees to kind of trickle in before I introduce our presenters for the evening, early evening. Um, I see we still have quite a few people joining, so I'm just going to give it one more second. All right. So before I introduce our presenters today, um, I just wanted to give you guys a bit of housekeeping. So during this event, um, the chat feature will not be available, but you can, if you have any questions about anything that's presented about today, you can enter it into the Q&A function, which you'll see at the bottom of your screen. We will have a live Q&A session at the end of the presentation. So make sure you're getting those questions in for our presenters. Um, and that's about it. So right now I'm going to turn it over to our presenters. We have Karen Allard and Jennifer Coppola from the nursing department. Thank you. My name is Jennifer Coppola. I work in the Office of Student Affairs. And just to give you a little background about Stony Brook University, it was founded in 1957. Our total student population is over 24,000. And we're proud to say we have students from nearly 50 states and more than 100 countries. Um, our instructional staff is hold, 98% of our instructional staff hold doctoral degrees or the highest degree in their field. 95% of recent graduates are currently employed or enrolled in graduate school or professional school. Some rankings that we're very proud of, we rank the top 1% in the world by Times Higher Education World University Rankings, top 25 best value public use in university by Kiplinger, top 40 national public university by US World and News Report, and ranked 16th among public universities with the highest return on investment by payscale.com. Here's a little bit about the uh, School of Nursing itself after our background about the university. Um, faculty credentials. We have 33 full-time faculty members. Um, four of them are in doctoral studies currently. Uh, we have 10 PhD doctorates. Our number of faculty with professional doctorates, EDD is four, DMP is 10, and we have a JD. In 2014, the number of pres national presentations we had was 30. And in 2014, the number of data, data research-based publications was 21. We're, we're proud of our, of our current students and our graduates. Um, one of the most important things you want to look at when you are looking at a nursing school is the NCLEX pass rates. And in 2020, our NCLEX first time pass rate was 98%. Just to give you some perspective, if you look at New York State um, overall, first time pass rate was 83%. And nationally, the first time pass rate was 84%. We're proud to be considered a military friendly school. And each year between 2016 and 2020, of those nurses hired by University Hospital, approximately 25% were new graduates of the School of Nursing. Um, this is our student body, School of Nursing student body as of fall 2020. Our enrollment was 1,352. Of that 86% were female and 14% were male. Our Asian population was 12%. Black was 11%, Hispanic was 13%, white was 52%, unknown was 10%, and those that categorized themselves as two or more races was 2%. That's a little background on the School of Nursing, a little bit about the university. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Ms. Karen Allard, who's the admissions coordinator, and she's gonna discuss the prerequisites and the mission requirements for our undergraduate, um, our undergraduate programs. Hi everyone, I'm Karen Allard. I'm the admissions coordinator for the School of Nursing. Um, so let's talk a little bit about um, the undergraduate programs. If you're newly admitted students, then you would be interested in the basic baccalaureate program. Um, for the basic baccalaureate program, we have a minimum cumulative GPA of 2.8. However, our cumulative GPA for our incoming student is about a 3.5. So we are extremely competitive. 
Um, this year, we received about 600 applications for the basic baccalaureate program, and we admitted about 65. So um, I could tell you what we're going to look for in an applicant. We're going to look for recommendation letters. We require three. Um, for young people and your young people, um, we would expect professors, we would expect perhaps a mentor um, for a place you volunteered, um, and perhaps a supervisor if you've ever held a job. Um, so that's what we're going to look for first. Then we're going to look at a cumulative GPA. Cumulative GPA is coursework taken from all colleges and universities attended. Then we're going to look at science pre-admission cumulative GPA, and we can get into the pre-admission coursework in a little bit. Um, then we're going to look at your essay or your personal statement, and then we're going to look at your resume. And for young people, we ask for a resume, um, but however, um, it can be very, very small, you know, one paragraph or so, you know, if you're a, a very young person. Um, the average age of our incoming student is about 27. So although we do have young people in the program, we do take people who it may be uh, their second careers. Okay, so we require in order to apply, we require a minimum cumulative GPA of 2.8. We require three of the four required pre-admission sciences completed by the application deadline. And we'll go into that in a little bit. We required you know, a paid application fee or an approved waiver. Um, as I discussed, we required three recommendation letters or three references that submitted electronically with the application. We require all unofficial transcripts to be uploaded to the application. Okay. So here are the requirements for the basic baccalaureate program. We require three credits of English composition. We require three credits of intro to sociology. We require three credits of intro to psychology. We require three credits of lifespan development. We require four credits of microbiology, four credits of anatomy and physiology one, four credits of anatomy and physiology two. We require on-site labs, but however, during COVID, we've been allowing online labs. We require three credits of chemistry, three credits of statistics, six credits of the humanities, three credits of fine arts, three credits of a US history. Um, Stony Brook is considered a USA. We require three credits of a global issue. We require three credits of the second semester of a foreign language. And we require nine credits of electives. So our total pre-admission credit amounts equal 57. So as you can see, it's the um, SUNY general education requirements and the pre-admission sciences for nursing. So you're coming into the program with 57 credits completed. Um, our nursing curriculum is 71 credits. So 57 and 71 is 128 credits, which is, which is the earned bachelor's degree. So upon graduating from the basic baccalaureate program, you will earn a bachelor of science major in nursing, and you'll be eligible to take the NCLEX to become a licensed registered nurse. And as my colleague mentioned about our NCLEX pass rate, we are very proud of our NCLEX pass rate. This year it was, or last year, it was 98%, which is well above average. And I recommend that if you are interested in applying to us, and you're interested in applying to other nursing schools as well, to look at the NCLEX pass rates, because that will give you a good idea of good quality nursing schools within New York State.
I'm not going to go into the um, pre-admission courses for the accelerated baccalaureate program, because in order to apply to the accelerated baccalaureate program, you need an earned bachelor's degree, or you need to be a senior in college with the expectation that you will be graduating before um, the nursing program begins. And Jennifer, if you would like to talk about Pre-Nursing Society. Sure, Pre-Nursing Society is a group that was created, oh, I think it was about 13 years ago. And what it does is it, it mentors students who plan to apply to the School of Nursing, um, either to the Accelerated Program or the Basic Baccalaureate Program. Um, it has current nursing students and representatives from the school who provide information about the application process and admission criteria. And what's wonderful about this organization is that um, there are faculty mentors, but students that are running the, uh, the club are actually current nursing students. So they can actually tell you what a day, uh, what a day and um, is like for a nursing student, what it's like to do clinicals, what it's like to balance, um, you know, your, your, uh, your coursework and your clinicals. And if you happen to be working, um, and they do wonderful volunteer events. We work very closely with the Veterans Home and they do beautiful things like Valentine's Day dances for the pediatric unit at the hospital. We do toy drives and it's just a wonderful organization to belong to. They do meet once a month. Um, I'm not sure what, the, what they plan on meeting you know, in the fall due to COVID. So they really haven't had any kind of set meetings. I think they've been doing it virtually but hopefully they'll start meeting again. And if you can't make the meeting because you have a class or something like that, what's really great about this organization, and please take down the um, email contact for the uh, Pre-Nursing Society, is they will let you know when they're working on volunteer work. So even if you can't attend all the meetings, you can participate in the volunteer work. And you could also find them on Facebook. And we highly recommend that you join Pre-Nursing Society mm -hmm. if you're interested in applying to the nursing program. Um, and also on our website, our website is, is, a, is a, a treasure trove of knowledge about um, about our about the pre-admission courses. We also have an online information session. So if you go to our website and you can click on the online information session and that's extremely helpful. Um, and it's, a, it's about a 15 minute presentation. And if you have any questions, you could always email Ms. Coppola, you can email me and we'd be more than happy to answer any question that you may have. So that's our, um, that's our presentation regarding our prerequisites, a little bit about the university, a little bit about the School of Nursing. So we'd be happy to take any questions any individuals might have. All right, great. Thank you, ladies. So we do have a few questions coming in, so I will start shooting them out to you guys. So the first one we have is, what if you got accepted to Stony Brook, but not the nursing program? Would I have to take the prerequisite classes for two years, then after two years, do clinical, et cetera? Um, everybody has to apply to the School of Nursing. So um, if you're admitted, you're not admitted as a nursing major, you're admitted as in, in a pre-nursing track. So you would apply to the School of Nursing at the very end of your at the very end of the fall semester of your second year. Okay, we don't expect you to have the 57 credits completed by then because you would still have another semester. Um, but we would have the, the expectation is that you would have three of the four pre admission sciences um, completed by the end of the fall semester of your second year. And you can apply to the School of Nursing as many times as you would like if you don't get in the first year. Um, you could apply at the end of your third year. You can apply again at the end of your senior year. At that point, you could apply to both the accelerated baccalaureate program and or the basic baccalaureate program. And the basic baccalaureate program starts every fall and the application deadline is early January. 
So it would be early January that you'd have to have the three prerequisite sciences completed in order to be considered for admission. And remember those pre-admission sciences are anatomy and physiology one, anatomy and physiology two, microbiology and chemistry. Perfect, perfect, thank you. You answered like three questions in one, so that was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> um, so one of the next questions we have is, I am starting in September in the health science program. I graduated from Nassau Community. I don't have all the required prerequisites for the nursing. Would I be able to apply again for the next session? I mean, again, it goes back to the amount of um, sciences you have by the application deadline. So um, it would be three of those sciences that Ms. Allard mentioned, um, either the micro, the a &P one and two, or the chemistry. You know, so if you have those completed and you have most of the prerequisites completed, then you'd be eligible to apply. Thank you. And of course, uh -huh. it will transfer over the coursework uh, from Nassau Community College, they said. Yeah, we'll, we'll, of course, we'll transfer. You don't necessarily have to take all the pre-admission coursework at Stony Brook. Um, you know, if you're, if you're looking, you need a science before the application deadline, you could certainly take it, you know, at Nassau Community College, Suffolk Community College, you know, any appropriate, appropriately accredited college or university. Thank you. Um, so I think this is just referring to, um, you know, at the time when they have the prerequisites and they're ready to go, when do we start applying and where do you go to find the application and what is the deadline to apply? The application is found on the School of Nursing website. So um, make sure that you go to the School of Nursing website, make sure that the application is open. The application opens August 1st every year. The application deadline has historically for the basic baccalaureate program been the first week in January, because that allows um, students who are applying to complete that third science, to get the grade, to upload their transcript to the application, and then to submit the application. Was there another question in there? No. No. You got it all. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So what is the acceptance rate into the nursing program after being a pre-nursing major for the two years? Um, specifically a pre-nursing major, I'm not certain because we will accept um, health science majors. We will accept psych majors. Um, the pre-nursing really just allows you to remain on the correct pathway in order to get all the pre-admission coursework done within the two years, but it doesn't necessarily give you an advantage into being accepted into the School of Nursing. Okay, so um, I would say about, maybe about 40% uh, of our student body in the basic baccalaureate program um, are Stony Brook um, main campus students. And I believe this year it was a little bit higher than that. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, next question. So really the overarching thing that I'm getting with this question is, would it be too late to send in an application for fall 2021? Yes. All right. Can I major in nursing and minor in business? So the question is, once you're admitted into the School of Nursing, can you take a minor? Correct. OK. Um, not really. Have we had students in the past um, receive a minor while they're in the School of Nursing? Yes, it's usually because when they start the School of Nursing, they only have one or two classes uh, to complete within that minor. Um, but, and, and typically you'd need the approval of the program director, Dr. Galicheski, um, or you, and you'd need the um, approval of the director of, for example, the business department. But it's not typical because um, nursing is very, it's a very, difficult uh, curriculum. It's not easy. 
so we really want you to focus on nursing and the typical nursing pathway each semester is a full-time uh, college workload. You know, you're taking, you know, generally speaking, uh, 17 to 18 credits per semester. So again, the basic baccalaureate program is two years. So you would start the fall semester typically of your junior year, and then you would graduate in the spring semester of your senior year. And we don't want you to accelerate and we don't want you to decelerate. You're on a very prescribed pathway. Awesome, thank you. So this is a little bit more of a different question. What are you looking for to stand out as a nursing applicant when you're ready to apply, what stands out to you in an application? GPA. Mm -hmm. So make sure that you do well. And of and, course, we'd like you to join pre-nursing society. Yes. <laughs> and we're going to look at those prerequisite sciences. Yes. We're going to look at that GPA as well. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, what are alternatives, alternative routes you can take if you don't get into the nursing program? Well, if you don't get into the nursing program, um, make sure that your applicant, make sure you were a qualified applicant. So make sure that you took three of those four pre-admission sciences. Um, I get the question, many times I get the question, well, you know, if I got a C in statistics, should I retake statistics? Absolutely not because it's not going to have an impact on your application. However, if you got a C in microbiology, you, or you got a C in A and P1 or two or chem, you may mm -hmm. think about retaking the, one of those four pre-admission sciences uh, if you did poorly. And if you got you know, a, a, a C, C plus, you know, et cetera. Um, because again, the average cumulative GPA of our incoming student is about a 3.5. Stony Brook, it's a little bit less because we give a slight advantage on the application to Stony Brook students. Mm -hmm. And we're also going to look at the four pre-admission sciences. So that would be a and 1 a and 2 micro, and chem. And the average cumulative GPA of those four sciences for our incoming student is about a 3.7 to a 3.8. So again, Stony Brook students, it's slightly less because you get a slight advantage on the application. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, what about if you have all the prerequisites from another college, how many credits will transfer? It, it depends upon what you've taken, um, but pretty much all the colleges are the same when it comes to the humanities, when it comes to the global issues, when it comes to you know, US history. Um, so um, we will certainly transfer you know, English composition. Uh, so we're good with that. You know, if you need to have some personal advisement, um, you could always email me, but don't everybody email me at once, please. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and Jennifer as well. Yes, of course. And we have another um, individual that we work with, um, Ms. Pam Prisculo. So there's three of us that you can email and we'll give you that information before we um, end the session. Beautiful, thank you. I was gonna ask about that. <laughs> <laughs> you read my mind. Um, next question is, what hospitals do you guys partner with? Um, well, we use hospitals as far west as Northwell Health, North Shore University Hospital. And our, we use as far east, uh, Southampton Hospital. So mm -hmm. we, we have a range of clinical affiliation agreements. And um, of course, we use University Hospital that's attached to the Health Sciences Center in Stony Brook. We like to give you a, a varied type of clinical setting. So we don't want you to have all your clinicals at University Hospital um, because that doesn't give you the variation that you need to understand how other hospitals work. Uh, so we like to vary it. We want you to have a car um, so that you can drive to your clinicals. Um, you have clinicals in the basic baccalaureate program, you have didactic coursework uh, two days a week, and you have clinicals on three days, no, clinicals two days a week, two and days. coursework right. three days a week in the basic baccalaureate program. 
and you will have clinicals on the weekends as well. Clinical sites are very, very hard to find. Um, so, uh, you know, if a faculty member assigns you a clinical on a weekend, you have to go. And that includes Saturday and Sunday. Part of the healthcare world, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, next question is if you aren't admitted into the school of nursing, but I guess you, um, I'm interpreting this as, you know, if someone still wants to pursue something close to that, or at least in healthcare, what are your options if you don't get admitted into the school of nursing? Well, um, what we like to tell our applicants is don't put your eggs all in one basket. So apply to other nursing schools as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, and then you have options, um, even an associate's degree nursing program. Um, if you can get into Nassau Community College, if you can get into Suffolk Community College, we, have, we offer a program called the Registered Nurse to Baccalaureate Degree Program. So that program is very easy to get into. We accept probably about 99% of the applicants into that program. You have to have an associate's degree in nursing. Um, once you get the associate's degree, you can take the NCLEX to become a licensed registered nurse, and then you can finish up with us and get your bachelor's degree in the registered nurse to baccalaureate degree program. That degree that you um, have earned is a bachelor of science major in nursing. It's the same degree that you will graduate with if you graduate from the basic baccalaureate program or the accelerated baccalaureate program. So it's just another way to become a nurse. Um, and again, it, the program is not as competitive as the accelerated or the basic baccalaureate program. So I would recommend that you go to our website. Um, you can get all the information about uh, that program. Perfect, thank you. Uh, what per, I don't, and I don't know if you guys know this offhand, but what percentage of admitted nursing students are Stony Brook undergraduates versus transfer students from other schools? Hmm. So, um, the basic baccalaureate program about about uh, tip on a typical year, thirty to forty percent are main mm -hmm. campus students. Um, this year again, it was a little bit higher we took in more Stony Brook students um, than we ever have before. Which means that Stony Brook students are really accomplishing wonderful things. Awesome, always glad to hear that. Um, just looking through a few more here. What is the highest nursing degree? So I guess how far can you go with nursing? Oh, Jennifer, you want to feel that one? Sure. Um, there's beyond the baccalaureate degree, there's advanced practice nursing, which is which is a nurse practitioner program, which Stony Brook does offer, and that is a master's degree. We also have non-clinical uh, nursing programs at the master's level, like in leadership and education. Beyond the master's degree, if your um, interest is clinical, then we have what's called a doctor of nursing pro uh, program. And you graduate with that program with a clinical degree and you are considered doctor. Then there's research focus. Some individuals are research focused and that would be the PhD in nursing. And I think, I think that's as high as you can go, right, Karen? Yes, but nursing yeah. is an absolutely <laughs> wonderful field. You can practice on the associate's degree level, even though they want you to get your bachelor's degree within mm -hmm. 10 years and all the way up to the PhD level. Beautiful. Thank you. And we offer a PhD program. We offer and the, and the DNP. And the DNP. Those, right. Those are the interest in the clinical portion of it. I mean, we offer um, a, a, um, masters in adult health. Mm -hmm. We offer a masters in pediatric health. We offer a masters in family health. Um, we offer a masters in nursing leadership. We offer a masters in nursing education. Psychiatric um, mental health. Uh, uh, psychiatric mental health. So we have quite a few programs um, within the School of Nursing at quite a few degree levels. Great, thank you. Um, 
So this next question, I am transferring into SBU in fall 2021 as a sophomore in pre-nursing, and I don't have all the prerequisites. Would I have to wait another year? It depends upon if they've completed or if that person's completed three of the four sciences. They can yeah, apply if they've completed three of the four sciences. Everything else can be outstanding, but has to be completed prior to the first day of classes. Okay, perfect. Is there a specific order that we have to take the prerequisite science classes? I always defer individuals to um, pre-health advising because they have, they lay out exactly what you need to get into the sciences, into the prerequisite sciences. Because, um, I mean, we, we handle the, the, nursing, the nursing portion of it, but how they get into those prerequisite courses really depends upon what the university requires. Right, because there are prereqs to the prereqs. Right. And sometimes, uh, I'm going to be quite honest, sometimes it's easier for students to take anatomy and physiology one and two outside of the university over the summer, because Stony Brook doesn't offer an anatomy and physiology one and two. Our um, sequence is uh, four credits of anatomy, which is A&P 300, and um, bio 203 and bio 204, which is the physiology piece. So sometimes it's just easier to take it outside of the university in the summer and we'll transfer it in. Perfect. Does SBU provide a neonatal nurse program? We do. And that would actually be a nurse practitioner program, which is at the master's level. So to apply to that program, you would have to uh, be a registered nurse um, and you would have to have a baccalaureate degree. Perfect. Thank you. Um, I noticed that there was two microbiology courses at Stony Brook, and I would like to know if they both count toward the requirements for the program. Well, there's Bio 299, and Bio 299 is a four credit class that would certainly transfer. There's also Bio 315. Bio 315 is a three credit course and we require four. So if you take Bio 315 and you are admitted into the School of Nursing, we will provide ways to complete the one credit lab. Okay, great. Um, is it, oh, hold on. Is it mandatory to apply to the School of Nursing your second year? or could, would you be able to apply your third or fourth year? You, you can, can apply at any point in your academic career. I mean, again, it goes back to those science courses. As long as you have those three prerequisite sciences completed by the application deadline, we have individuals that apply after their second year, their third year. Sometimes they finish up a degree that they just are not satisfied with and they wanna go into nursing. So they can apply at any time. However, I always tell this to applicants, don't keep applying to the School of Nursing if you don't get in because you're putting your life on hold and you don't wanna do that. You wanna progress professionally. Um, so if you can remedy your application in some way, if you, you know, increase your GPA from one year to the next, or you decide perhaps maybe you want to retake the sciences to increase your science pre-admission cumulative GPA, by all means do so. But if you're not remedying your application in some way and you keep getting denied, please don't keep applying. Um, it's not good for you to stop growing professionally. Perfect, thank you. Um, next question, why, or is there a reason that the School of Nursing doesn't have a four-year program that starts in the freshman year? We're considered an upper division nursing program. Right. So, uh, you know, that means that you're coming in with 57 credits and then you're completing the nursing degree in two years. Um, we do have a very, very small program called the Nursing Scholars Program um, that there, we maybe take five students um, that come in uh, as first year students already admitted into the School of Nursing. But it's very, very um, small, very small program. Okay, great. 
uh, does the School of Nursing waitlist applicants? Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. We do. So um, someone who was put on the waitlist has to wait until somebody who has already been, had admitted declines their offer of admission. And once somebody declines, we will go to the waitlist. And we do. We go to the waitlist every year. Awesome. Thank you. Does SBU nursing faculty help students get jobs after graduation? We have a career center that students are absolutely welcome to use. And a lot of their work, when they do their work clinically, they establish relationships. And a lot of time um, before they're even graduated, they have job offers. Correct. And so, so, those, so those clinical opportunities that the students um, and the faculty place them in are a wonderful opportunity to establish relationships you know, for um, future jobs. There's a, uh, the, the nursing curriculum, as I said, is pretty prescribed. However, the very last course, which is called Capstone, um, the student, it's the very last clinical course. The student, generally speaking, gets to choose where they want to do their capstone, what they're interested in. And we try as best as possible to place them in a hospital um, where in the area that they want to eventually work in, although it's no guarantee of getting a job, that's where we encourage students to make their connections, you know, get to know the people in that area. Um, because then hopefully, if, if, you know, if there is a good relationship, you know, you might be hired by that hospital. No guarantee, of course. There's not a guarantee, but we are proud to say that our students are welcomed and they, um, the hospitals do search for our students. Great, awesome. Um, so I'm, I'm assuming this is in relation to once uh, you actually apply, do you guys have a specific notification date that you try to release all decisions by? Is it case by case? How does that work for the school division? Decisions, uh, we like to get decisions out all at once because you know if you have a few that go out, you're going to have all the other applicants email us and tell us someone so got their decision and I didn't. So we try to get them out all at once. Um, <laughs> decisions for the basic baccalaureate program. Again, the application will open in August. The application deadline is usually the first week in January. Um, decisions go out sometime in uh, April, usually, for a program that starts the following August. Okay. Great, thank you. Uh, what makes Stony Brook nurse grads stand out compared to those of other nursing programs? And I'm assuming this is after graduation? I think one of the things that makes us stand out, again, is our high NCLEX pass rate. I was gonna say that as well. I mean, we're, we're way above the national average and the state average. And um, in our accelerated baccalaureate program, I think the pass rate was 100%. And the, in the basic baccalaureate program, it was 96 point something percent, which averaged out to the 98% that we gave you earlier. And you know they, they're really gonna look at that and if individuals are looking at schools and they should be, that's one of the things to really consider is the NCLEX pass rate. Awesome. Uh, if I am in the honors program, would I still be in it if I get accepted into the School of Nursing? So do you guys have students that are admitted into the School of Nursing that are also in the honors program? Do you know? I think once, once they accept the um, nursing, the admission into the nursing program, they become nursing students. So the curriculum is all basically, you know, the nursing curriculum. So, I mean, I don't have a direct answer for that, but I don't believe that they stay within the honors. Do you, Karen? Uh, they, they don't. Right, okay. I mean, you can still graduate with honors in the nursing program, mm -hmm. okay, but it's not the honors program per se. Perfect. Um, looks like there's quite a few repeats. Um, this must have been, you know, may have a few people joining us a little bit later. So I'm just trying to scroll through here.
So I can talk about um, the, the the process, you know, for admission mm -hmm. a little bit. So um, we'll get about 600 applications for the uh, basic baccalaureate program. We're going to look at your recommendation letters. I spoke about that. We're going to uh, take into consideration your cumulative GPA, your science pre-admission cumulative GPA. We're going to look at your essay or your personal statement. We're going to look at your resume. So that would be, you know, your volunteer or your life experience. Then we'll go through that. We will invite 150 to 200 applicants into interview. During that interview process, you will be asked to submit a writing sample and you will be asked to take a math exam. So I get the question um, about the interview. Um, for young people, we would ask that you practice, maybe go down to the career center when it's practice interview day and just practice interviewing because you may be interviewing with somebody who's 40 years old, who's 50 years old, um, who may be very, very comfortable in, what, in, in a job interview per se. So we just ask you to practice. For the writing sample, um, it's a topic that will be given to you by faculty that day. Um, we look for a, basically a composition, so it would be a good introductory um, uh, paragraph, a good body of the, uh, par uh, of the essay uh, or the writing sample, and a good conclusion. And the math exam. Um, really, it's, it's, I get the question all the time, you know, is it calculus? No, it's not calculus. <laughs> um, the most difficult piece on the math exam um, is algebra. It's really mm -hmm. solving for X. We look for fractions, we look for decimal places, simple word problems, you know, moving decimal places, um, et cetera. So then we'll rate the applicant on the writing sample, the interview, the math exam, and then we will choose our class. Perfect, thank you. So we do have quite a few uh, questions about, if you could just go, I know you went over this, but um, the overall acceptance rate into the programs, what the percentage is typically. Well, we, we get for the, for, the two, for the basic baccalaureate program, we get about, Karen, was it 600 or 800 applications? About 600 applications for the basic baccalaureate program. And this year we admitted 65. Right. For the, base, for the accelerated baccalaureate program, we received about 900 applications this year and we admitted 80. Okay, great. And then there is a question about, is there a nursing exam for admission in order to get admitted into the program? Do they have to take any type of entry exam? We don't have any formal entrance exams, such as the T's, we, we, we don't. Okay, perfect. Do Stony Brook nursing students get to do their clinicals at Stony Brook Hospital? We give them a diverse, um, diverse opportunities. Yes, they do some of their clinicals at Stony Brook Hospital, but we do resource out to the other hospitals as well. And we like to vary their experience. Mm -hmm. Great. So we also have a question about what support systems exist for students in the nursing program. So they mentioned clubs, academic support. Um, I know we have the pre-nursing society, but is there anything beyond that that students can get involved in? The I have to say the um, undergraduate faculty is phenomenal. They work so closely with their students and they do they do review sessions with the students. And now that we've had COVID, they do Zoom sessions for review with the students. Um, we have individuals like, let's say some, um, someone's suffering through um, pathobiology or pharmacology. We have former students that are willing to tutor them. So we do have support systems. Plus we utilize the university support systems. We do have a coordinator for student resources that we often refer our students, our students to that are having some difficulties. And, and I can, if I can mention, um, there's a course that's an elective that first year and second oh, yeah. year students mm -hmm. can take. It's HNI 290 and it's Introduction to Nursing and it's a two credit elective. So I would recommend taking uh, that as well. Get to, little, get to know a little bit more about the profession of nursing. 
because there are sometimes I find that students say, oh, I want to be a nurse, I want to be a nurse. And then, you know, when they actually are in a hospital setting, it's like, no, 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 I don't want to be a nurse. So mm -hmm. I would recommend that, uh, you know, students take that. Awesome. Is the program only for the fall or do you have applications for the spring as well? We've had quite a few quite re repeats questions about that. We begin our program once a year in the fall for the basic baccalaureate program. The accelerated baccalaureate program, we begin the program once a year and that starts in the summer. Great, thank you. How would you compare the workload of the nursing programs compared to other programs that may be offered um, at the university? Or just what, you know, what does the workload look like overall for nursing students? Uh, well, um, you figure the nursing curriculum is 71 credits over four academic semesters. Uh, so it's a typical uh, full-time college workload, um, plus you're adding clinicals to that. Uh, so it's intense. The nursing program's intense. Um, as compared to other programs in the university, I really can't say. Right. Um, you know, because I, I would assume that it's harder than some majors, um, but I would assume, you know, for some, you know, being a chemistry major might be outrageously difficult. I, you know, I, I don't know, but it is. It's a very, um, uh, you have to work very hard in the School of Nursing. That's why in the basic baccalaureate program and the accelerated baccalaureate program, um, you really can't work. We don't advise anyone to work while enrolled in the program. Okay, great. And we had a few questions about um, the ability to take prerequisite courses in the summer. I don't know if you guys are aware of, you know, what the offerings are in terms of the prerequisites that you guys require, how often they're offered at Stony Brook in the summer. I, I would say that I would say for those that are interested in taking the coursework at Stony Brook in the summer to go speak with pre-health advising because they would be better uh, at identifying what's being offered in the summer and what the student may need. Um, you know, for the pre-admission sciences, sometimes it's easier to take anatomy and physiology one and two outside of the university over the summer. Okay, great, thank you. Are you allowed to apply to multiple nursing school programs when you apply to Stony Brook? Um, for the accelerated and the basic baccalaureate program, mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're a senior and you plan on um, graduating in the spring of your senior year, then you can apply to the accelerated and the basic baccalaureate programs. Okay, great. It looks like we're pretty much wrapping up our questions. Um, so the one thing that I always like to do at the end of these sessions is ask you both, um, do you have any advice? Because you know the majority of the students attending today have been admitted. Um, so do you have any words of advice for them um, starting out, pursuing the nursing programs, anything that you can offer? Um, and then we'll kind of wrap things up after that. The GPA is extremely important. So just do the best you can to just focus on your studies and just study really, really hard. And if you can get involved in pre-nursing, that's also a nice plus. And again, if you have any questions, um, you can email us. Um, you can go on the School of Nursing website and you can take a look at the online information session. And that would basically go over almost everything that we talked about today. Awesome. And our contact information is on there as well. Yeah. Yeah. So we in the chat uh, for anyone attending currently, uh, we have listed both Jennifer and Karen's contact information. So you have that, you have their email addresses. We put posted their uh, website link as well. In addition to the pre-nursing society information, their Facebook page, um, and the email contact for the Nursing Society. Uh, we did also put up a discount code for you guys since you are newly admitted. So make sure you get that if you want to get some Stony Brook swag before you start with us. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> and that's pretty much it. So again, thank you both so much for presenting today. This was great. We had a lot of questions. Uh, for the attendees, if we didn't get to your question, feel free to reach out directly to the nursing department. Um, or if it's admissions related, we can also assist with that as well. Um, I see we have our enroll um, email address in the chat as well. So everything's there for you. Um, and this will also be posted onto our YouTube page. So you can watch the recording to review any questions that you may have missed or information. Um, and that's pretty much it. So thank you all for attending. Thank you to our presenters, Karen, Jennifer, and I hope you all have a great night. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Of course. Have a good night, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.